Hey, Dansky here with another tutorial and in this video I'm going to be showing you how to produce your own custom bespoke lettering in Adobe Illustrator. That's going from the concept and idea stage through to reproducing digitally. Okay, so for the sake of this video I've come up with a phrase, change is good. At the moment all the letters are of equal size and weight and the two most important words here are change and good. The word is, is a bit less important so I'm going to shrink that down. Okay, so this is always a good a good thing to do is decide what words you want to pull out as part of your composition and just do it very quickly. You can either do it in Illustrator or some people prefer to do it with pencil and paper. It's entirely up to you. So once you've got this and you've got a rough idea of the keywords you can start to work on some rough layouts. So I've produce this here and then this is then a starting point for me to go over to my sketch pad and start sketching out some ideas. Okay so you can see I've started sketching let your mind just be totally open here and just create a whole different bunch of ideas don't worry too much about the thickness of the letters and the uh, and the different the details at this stage as you can see here I'm kind of developing some ideas but they start off is very linear just to really get the the idea and the the kind of what I'm going for with the different shapes and how the letters are all going to come together okay so once you've got a design that you're happy with okay start developing that design play around with type think how, how can you link letters together you know this is where you start to refine exactly what you're what you're looking for and the approach you're going to take so you can see here I'm I'm inking it you can go over it in pencil a lot firmer, firm up the lines before doing this. When you get to the stage of inking, this is where you're really going for it and you're committing to this design. And you can see here that I'm starting to fill in inside the outlines now. So this is the final design, this is what I've committed to. And now I'm just going to fill everything in and get ready to upload my design to the computer. So as you can see we've uploaded our image to the computer and you can either do this using a scanner or you can use a smartphone. I used the camera on my iPhone 5 and it seemed to do the job pretty well so I'm quite happy with that. If you zoom in you can see it still picks up enough detail that we'll be able to use. So at the moment yes it's a bit ropey, it's not perfect, that's fine and I haven't coloured in the word is yet. I'm going to leave that until we're in Illustrator. But what I do want to do at this stage is open this up in Photoshop if you've not done so already. Okay. So you can see that's our background layer. What we're going to do is we're going to go to Image, Adjustments, Hue and Saturation, and we're going to drag the saturation all the way to the left. So we're going to take out that yellow. Okay. So it's now black and white. And we're going to go to Image again, Adjustments and Levels. And we're going to bring the blacks down and bring the whites up a bit. So you can see where the grey is on this image. That's slowly becoming lighter. So this is becoming a, a lot more like something that we can work with. Okay, so I'll just click OK. You can see this is where we were. And this is where we've come to. So these edges are nice and clearly defined now. So when we go into Illustrator, it's a lot easier to work with something that has a bit more clarity. Next, we're going to move on to opening this image in Illustrator to complete our design. OK, so I've opened up the file that we created at the beginning. And we had the text, change is good. And I'm just going to delete that. Go to File, Place, and then select the JPEG we just created in Photoshop. And then left click to place it on the artboard. Okay, so there we go. What I'm going to do now is select this. I'm going to drop the opacity down to about 50%. And then I'm going to rename this layer Trace. And then just click in this space here just to lock it. So it won't affect that layer when we come to actually creating the lettering. And that being said, I'm going to create a new layer and put that at the top. So now what we're going to start to do is to effectively recreate this in Illustrator. 
Now one thing you can do is you could life trace it instead where you can select the image without locking it, go to object, image trace and then make. I'm not going to go into that in this tutorial but there are a whole ton of options and what it will do is it will automatically take your illustration and create it into a vector. So that's why we created this definition between the white and the black. So it gave it a bit more contrast because if you were to trace the image like that, it would be a lot easier. An illustrator would be able to recognize uh, the kind of edges of the shapes a bit better. But for this tutorial, we're going to recreate this now. Okay, so we're going to do this using the shape tools mostly. I like to select an outline. Just bump up the width of the stroke. There we go. At about 45. Okay, and then I'm going to get my rulers up and just create some guides. So when I'm creating my lettering, I know that everything is straight. Depending on the design that you're doing, you might not have as specific guides as me. Your letters could be all, short, all sorts of different shapes and sizes, but for me, I want this to be straight. And as you can see in my drawing, it's a little bit off. Okay, so this is quite a good trick when creating the letter C. You can create a circle. Using the direct select tool, you can simply click on an anchor point and hit delete, and it will delete that anchor point and leave you with a C. So then when I go to the line tool, it will remember the 45 point stroke that I made, and I can draw another one. And I can simply, holding Alt and Shift and left click, drag across, just duplicate that there and then copy and pasting, and then rotating, I can create that there. So actually you can see that this is actually quite a quick process. So we create, we create this side of the A, and then we're gonna copy and paste in place, and then we're gonna transform and reflect it vertically to create the other side of the A. And we're just going to copy these again. So a lot of these you can actually reuse. And things like the uh, the stem here of the A, you want to copy that across so that forms the stem of the N, uh, the spine of the N, sorry. So the angle is the same. Actually, no. I'll eat my words. I think that would look a bit better. Yeah, the spacing was a bit too narrow on that. Just fiddle around with it until you find what works for you. Just bring that back up. But it really helps having these guides all set up and then having smart guides turned on and snapped a point. So as you're creating things, it will snap in place. Just keeping things nice and tidy. So I'm just going to go through and finish off this lettering. Remember, if you're rotating, holding shift will rotate. So that's free rotating. If I hold shift, it will rotate in increments of 45 degrees, which is really handy. And then again, I'm going to copy this over here as this is going to form part of the G and I've got the I know I've got the exact same shape with the same curvature and everything then which is nice for consistency okay so this is very rough at this stage but if I switch off the bottom layer and the guides you can see it's starting to come together what I'm going to do now is just go through 
and just start to polish up all these edges and tighten up all these corners and apexes and just get everything looking a bit more like how I'd like it to look. So as you can see, I'm more or less happy with this. I'm just going to switch the bottom layer off. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. I've just sort of tidied up these um, bottom bits here that were sticking out. What I've done is I've also converted these strokes. So if you select everything and go to Object, Expand, and then click OK again when you see the dialog box pop up, it will convert the strokes into just a shape. So as you can see now, it's no longer recognized as a stroke or an outline. And then you can select the different paths, go up to your Pathfinder palette, and select Unite, and it will pull this all together into one complete shape, as you can see here. Right, I'm going to I'm going to keep it red now, just because as I'm tracing over everything, with the trace at the bottom being black and white, it just helps me see that this stand out against it. So I'm going to switch that bottom layer back on again, and now we're going to work on the word good. So a really quick way to create the infinity sign, if you don't want to do it by hand manually, is you can set a type tool, click anywhere on the artboard, go to type, glyphs, and scroll down until you find the infinity sign. Double click this, and you've got yourself an infinity sign. Voila. Okay. This is the very quick and easy way to do it. It's not quite the right shape. And you can convert that from text to outlines with this here, create outlines. So that now becomes an image rather than lettering. And you can experiment with this until you get something that you're generally happy with. And I think I might just thicken that up with an outline. Okay. There we go. Something like that, I think. And now that has an outline on it, what I will do is I will go to Object, Expand Appearance, so now it's converted that outline just to a part of the shape. It's no longer recognized as a stroke. And then if I go to Object and Ungroup, click the Pathfinder tool, and then Unite again. It will just take all those pieces and just put them into one single shape that you can see here. Nice and simple. No shapes and shapes within shapes, which can get confusing further down the line. Okay, so now I'm going to go and create the G. So, same as the above, really. No, that's the wrong tool. We're going to use our circle tool. We're going to draw a circle. And we're just going to delete part of it. And again, as above, we're going to draw some guides so we know that everything lines up nicely. There we go, like so. Switch that from a fill to an outline. And the width of that is going to be considerably larger so it matches our infinity sign let's see if we can get this as close as possible okay so I think I think about 185 should do it there we go I'm just gonna bring this down just so it lines up with the guides that we've created more or less. If you're a perfectionist like me, it'll, it'll absolutely have to line up with the guides, no matter what. But that's absolutely fine. Right, there we go. So I'm pretty happy with that. And what I'm going to do is just using the pen tool, I'm going to hold Alt and left click on that anchor point and holding Shift I'm going to draw a straight line. I'll probably drag that in a little bit. And then I'm going to 
I just do the same down here. Alt. And you can see with the smart guides turned on, it helps me line them up. And then I'm going to do another one. Straight up here. Probably bring, bring those in a bit. Just so the edge lines up on the G. So at the moment they're just a little bit off. So let's just tap that in place with the arrow keys. Perfect. And I can almost cheat the D really. I can just hold Alt and Shift and left click to drag this across. And then we go to Object, Transform, Reflect. Reflect it along the vertical axes. And then drag this up. And then drag these points in so they meet. And then what you can do here is you can see you've got this weird cutout bit. You can select those points with the direct selection tool. That's both of them. Go to Object, Path, and Join, and it will join that into a complete path. And then we've got our D. And as with this infinity sign, I'm going to select both of these and expand them. So go to Object, Expand, Fill, and the Stroke. So as you can see, they are one complete shape, just like the infinity sign. And I'm just going to select these and bring them in. And uh, there we go. Make sure they just line up. So the C from change lines up with the G from good. And make sure the E and the D line up as well. Again, guides come in handy here. And just make sure that infinity sign is placed nicely and neatly in the middle. Okay, there we go. So we've traced everything that we need to. So now we can switch off that layer because we don't need that anymore. We may as well turn our change to black. So we get a better idea of how it's actually going to look. Okay, so the last step now really is just to add the is. Now the reason I left this out is because I just wanted to use a typeface uh, from Adobe Illustrator. So there are no rules really when it comes to whether you should use pencil and paper or produce work in Adobe Illustrator on the computer. It can You can go backwards and forwards sometimes. You can do a bit here and a bit there. It really doesn't matter. But you will find that you have a personal preference and that's absolutely fine. So in this I'm just going to pick I'm New Roman. I'm going to go for an italic. Nice italic version. These letters are a bit too far apart, so I'm just going to bring those a bit closer together. There we go. And then I'm going, I'm going to create outlines. So it just converts it from text into a shape. Check it lines up with the bottom, uh, with the baseline of the word change. That's great. Bring it up in size a bit. Center it. And just zoom out. And there we go. We've created our custom lettering from sketches, from bits we've done on the computer, but that is the process from start to finish. I hope this tutorial was helpful. If it was, please leave a like and let me know what you thought in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe for more videos and I'll see you next time.